Well, let's get started. So, um, what I'll do is uh, get the underpainting going first, and I'll show you my the value sketch that I did, if that's in a good spot, Dylan. Um, hmm? Sure, yeah. So, um, and then when the underpainting's drying, I'll just take those that minute or two um, to kind of talk through my setup. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But I just did a quick value sketch in my in my sketchbook, just really trying to place the major shapes. This is a, a nine by twelve uh, UART premium mounted board. It's five hundred grit. So I just drew a three by four square, marked my midpoints on either side, so I so I avoid those. Don't want anything coming off the page or hitting the edges right at those midpoints. And then I just made myself a, a few little tick marks about where I wanted those major shapes to kind of hit um, the edges so that I kind of make sure those are varied and things aren't too symmetrical, right? We, we tend to kind of make that happen. So I'm going to, I'm just going to mostly for now, um, start to, to work on this underpainting, not really looking at the scene, but really trying just to stay focused on my, my value sketch. So I'm going to use a pastel pencil and this is just a, um, Conte pencil, just kind of a mid-tone. So I'm just going to roughly find my midpoints. I'm not too worried about getting exact, but just so I use them and kind of measure against it. So I'm just going to loosely sketch in these shapes. And I tend to, to try to put in at least one rough line to indicate where my tree trunks are going to go first. And we're out at Stewart Park here in Tulsa, just on the other side of Gilcrease Museum. And so you'll probably hear some folks in the background. We're not too far off the path. And it's a really lovely day. And <clears throat> No doubt there'll be some people coming out to take photos and walk, so that's, uh, that's the background noise going on. A lot of family photos and things going on this time of the year, so. Okay, my horizon's going to be, if I can get it somewhat straight. Up there. A little light and shadow pattern to catch that. Kind of indicate where that's going to be. A little more at the bottom. And I'm not going to focus too much on some of these branches and trunks and things over here. I'm really looking at this bit of yellow color, yellow foliage, it's going to kind of come right down through here. So focal point will probably be somewhere right around in here, but I'm not going to get too worried about details. So honestly, I think that gives me what I need just to get a sense of where I'm going to put the light and the dark shapes. So let's go with that. Um, so I have this box of just some Krita color pastel pencils and some bits and pieces of various um, new pastels. And I honestly don't use new pastels um, much other than for the underpainting. Um, and really, I, I feel like I kind of honed my underpainting from um, a really great Barbara Janicki workshop last year. So I'm, I'm really kind of using her method um, so I'm going to put in the darks with this um, blue-violet new pastel. And I'm just going to lightly scumble them in. Um, and then I'll 
using two or three different values of new pastel and then I'll um, wash them in with just some rubbing alcohol. Got some dark going over here. And especially in these shadows. On the front. Over here. And you know, too, with plein air painting, I'm not even really, now I say this, I try to make this true. It's getting a little easier the more I do it. I really, unless I'm in a, doing a plein air competition, which I haven't been able to do any this year because most of them have been canceled, but I'm, I really try just to think about this as a, just as a painting exercise. If it, if it turns out well, that's great. And if it doesn't, um, it's, it's practice. It's a good way to learn. It's, it's a good way to just to, to keep your skills up. And so I try not to worry too much if things don't just turn out wonderfully. Sometimes you get just tired of standing out or it gets too hot or a little too cold. It's too distracting. Um, and so I try not to worry about it too much and just think about the process of doing it as opposed to the final product. So switch to a little bit of violet because I really want these yellow leaves to have that, oops, that bit of a, um, violet underpainting showing through. I think that contrast of the yellow and the violet will be nice. Of course, I'll go ahead and put some sky holes in later. Really just focus more on the tree. I'm not interested in the sky. In fact, that may be a little too distracting. I don't want a just little square of sky in the corner, so I'll, I'll just bring the foliage all the way up to the top. Back to my sketch. I think that'll work. And this is all pretty dark, but once I come in and wash it down, there'll be some contrast between this really darker area that I want sort of toward the bottom and the side where it's in the shadow. And with the pastel I put on top, we'll really lighten this area up so it'll match my shadow, my um, sketch a little bit more. And I think for the, for the light areas, See a little bit of that tree line back there and the grass, which is sort of being directly hit. I'm gonna use this orange and just go with that. Just kind of keep that sense of light going. Lightly apply that. Again, just trying to establish nothing more at this point but light and shadow shapes. And then um, you know the light's already changing a little bit, but I don't I don't think I want that many repetitions of light and shadow. I'm just gonna bring the shadow all the way down and I can maybe show a little light showing through here and there but I'm not going to have a big strip of light at the bottom I think that's going to be too distracting so um so that's kind of my that's my that's my value map that's where I hope to keep the values and um the one thing I will do though I'm going to come in and I can still see you probably can't see it on the camera but I can still see my initial indications of where I wanted 
some of that dark tree trunk to show through. So I'm just gonna come through with this new pastel and put that back in. It's a bigger trunk over on this side. Actually there are a couple. And I'm not really trying to accurately recreate every little bit. I just kind of want the sense of it. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go with that. So, um, now I'm just gonna wash it in. And I've got um, a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Um, but honestly, um, I, I've got a bottle of um, rubbing alcohol in my backpack, but then I pour a little bit into this. It's actually a peppercorn <laughs> jar. Uh, and it's the perfect size, because then I can just put a little bit of alcohol in here. And I've got a really stiff, really kind of well-worn brush. I usually keep a fan brush with me too, but I don't think I'm gonna use that today. I say that, we'll see what happens when I get into it. <clears throat> but uh, I'm just gonna wash this down. And like I said, I'm on a UART premium mounted board, so it will take the alcohol really well. I will say this particular board, and I've never had this issue before, is a little slightly warped. I don't know what happened to it. It's got a little bit of a bow to it, but, um, but I've applied everything on the panel and it's not really been an issue, so I won't worry about it. You could, of course, do this with water. You could do it with mineral spirits if you wanted to. Um, you could use watercolor instead of new pastel but I generally go with new pastel and then I just wash it down. I'm gonna hit these light areas first just to keep my alcohol cleaner in the bottle. And I'm really just gonna let it drip. I, I usually tend to have pretty loose underpaintings anyway, but I really wanna keep this whole thing loose and impressionistic. I'm gonna to try to not overwork it try to not chase the light um, the light so we're we're facing kind of west northwest so the sun will should stay uh, even though it's moving traveling the lights traveling hopefully in the next hour or so it's not going to move enough to really change the shadow so that's kind of why i set up here trying to anticipate that problem. And I'm not even really scrubbing, I'm just tapping my brush just enough to let the rubbing alcohol come through. Um, this is 70% rubbing alcohol. I, I usually, when I can, try to get the 90%, but this year it's been so, there's some folks having a good time with the kids getting their pictures made over there. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, Anyway, it's been so hard to find 90% uh, in, the, in the pharmacies. Couldn't find any for a while, so whenever I would see a bottle of 70%, I would just get it. But it, honestly, the difference is no big deal. And we're outside and it's gonna dry really quickly. So again, I'm just kind of barely flicking and especially along these tree trunks, I'm just gonna tap my brush against them just to sort of set that pigment into the panel. And then I'm just gonna let it drip and see what happens. And especially because this, I really wanna keep this light area in the background pretty loose. I think the drips are gonna be just fine. It's a little too light with just that orange anyway, so. Just work all over the canvas, or the panel rather. And I especially like how the drips dry in dark areas. So they can suggest tree trunks and limbs and all sorts of things and you don't really even have to sometimes do anything to it. Just leave the underpainting showing. And so see wetting it down already this is quite a bit lighter than this darker area over here. And of course, as it dries, it'll continue to lighten up a bit, but. 
Just working my way through it. And this is obviously not a complex composition either. Just came down <clears throat> before we got set up. My new friend Dylan is helping me out today recording, so I don't have to worry about watching the camera or the microphone or anything. But came down and, and um, I just, as I generally try to do when I'm either doing some plein air painting or else, I've, I've really also kind of been doing a lot of urban sketching in the last year or so too. I try not to spend a whole lot of time looking for the perfect place. I really tried to just to train myself to look and see what catches my eye and set up and see what I can do with it and not spend a lot of time wandering around looking for the perfect place because it's usually you're not going to find it. And I kind of like the challenge too of finding a spot that maybe seems a little ordinary and doing something really interesting with it. This is kind of one of those spots. I mean, this yellow color on the trees over there is really, is really great. Um, so let's just see if we can showcase that and not worry about the rest of it. I think we've got it all covered and it's almost all dry. I am going to let this drip over here. Just a little more, put a little more alcohol on it. Maybe encourage that to drip a bit more. See if I can get a little more of that pigment to come down, but I think that's good. And like I said, it's almost dry, so. Okay. Dylan, I'm going to step out of the way too. Just, I don't know if you can maybe zoom in or zoom down a little bit, but um, just to kind of, I'll kind of talk through my, my whole setup. So, um, when I paint plein air, I don't normally paint larger than 9 by 12. Every once in a while, I'll bring out 11 by 14. But I, I do a lot of work on 9 by 12. Um, um, especially when I'm painting plein air. I, you know, an hour, hour and a half tops, and I'm kind of ready to move on to something else. Um, the light's changed enough by then. The conditions have changed enough. Um, so I really try to make that work. And so my, I, I like to keep a really light, easy setup. Um, this is a Heilman box and a Heilman easel that just plugs right into those two holes built into the box. This is the backpack size. And Dylan, I don't know, let me move this out of the way if you can maybe zoom in on the pal a little bit. I need to do a little bit of reorganizing, but um, I organize my pastels reds and yellows, greens, blues, violets, some neutrals over here on the side. And most of them are Terry Ludwig's that I've broken in half. Um, I honestly, most of my um, bigger palette at home is also Terry Ludwig, Ludwig pastels. But um, there are a few occasional things. I've got a couple of schminkies in here and a couple of pieces of some Diane Townsend's that I've also broken, but it's almost all Terry Ludwig's. And at home, my palette, I have a, probably 70, 80% Terry Ludwig pastels, but I've also really um, started using Richardson hand rolled a lot. I don't have any of those here. Um, and then a variety of other things, certainly some Rembrandt's here and there. Um, some Mount Vision pieces. Actually, there are probably a couple of pieces of Mount Vision pastels in here too, but mostly my, my plein air setup is Terry Ludwig. And then I keep, like I said, a little bit of a box of some pastel pencils and some bits of new pastels that I'll use, um, either for underpaintings or sometimes for a little bit of blending or some final details, just kind of depends. Um, I usually put a little piece of aluminum foil there under the tray just so it's cleanups a little bit easier. Keep some paper towels here just hanging from this chain that I just attach to the to the box and one of the Heilman plastic pallet trays that I keep off to the side and you'll see in a few minutes or as I select pastels out of the box rather than put them back in I'll just keep them here over to the side. The other thing about that too is that it really keeps me 
working with a pretty limited palette. Um, and I'll show you how I approach selecting colors. Um, and then I, this is just on a quick release um, attachment to this Mi Photo tripod that's really lightweight. And so basically everything with the exception of the tripod, um, I can keep in, in my backpack. And so it's a really easy setup. I also keep with me um, just a value finder, color wheel if I need it. Um, here's another viewfinder. I think a lot of folks are familiar with um, these view catchers that you can adjust and use. Um, honestly, one of my favorites though, and I keep this in my plein air setup. Um, so Susan Edgman over in Arkansas, I believe makes these viewfinders with a built-in value scale and with this red, um, oh, it's not cellophane, but you know, this red material, if I, if I hold it up, it just eliminates the color and really is great for assessing value. And so to have that as a viewfinder with your value scale here, I really love this thing. And she uh, makes them in her, in her shop and sells them just a few bucks. They're not very expensive at all, but they're fantastic. So um, I just keep those things. And of course, a little sketchbook, which this morning I spilled a bunch of coffee on. So, you know, what's a good sketchbook without some stains? <laughs> um, and so things, yeah, fit really neatly in my backpack. And I'll, I'll kind of show you what that overall setup just looks like once it's packed up. But it's really lightweight and easy to travel. In fact, this time of the year, often I honestly keep it in the car so that if I'm driving around, I'm on the way home after work or, you know, I've just been to the store to pick up something, you know, whatever, if I'm out and about and if I see something that I just really catches my interest and especially when the weather's so great, then um, it's great to stop and just paint a little bit, so.